Hey everyone, John Paul from JP Enterprises here. And here in 1969, what a geek, right? Well, we got something completely different for you today, kind of a special interest story, if you will. You know, as we get to the autumn of our lives, it's common for us to uh, look back on the road traveled and try to figure out how we got to the present for good or for otherwise. Now, I've been blessed to work in an industry in a, a field that I'm passionate about with people I love and respect. And I've been able to compete shoulder to shoulder with the best shooters in the world and count them as my brothers. And I'm ever so grateful to all of you in the shooting community for your support bringing us here today. So this is a short story about the people and the organizations that make that sort of thing possible. Hey, I even cleaned up for this. Well, this is where it really started, 56 years ago today. This is the small bore range in the bowels of St. Thomas Military Academy. Yes, I know it's called just St. Thomas Academy now, and that's another story. But for me, it will always be STMA, St. Thomas Military Academy. The military was always a point of pride with me, not one of contention. I even have my collar brass saved with STMA on it. I continued to use these even after the name was revised as my personal statement. At the academy, for me, it was the nexus of the military instruction and the civilian academics that combined to make a unique mix of cultures. It gave me a real appreciation for what the military has accomplished and brought to our way of life as Americans. The purity of the military value system, the essential nature of it, in the success and survival of our country did not escape me. 56 years ago, I was prone right here firing my qualification target for the ROTC program at the academy. As it so happened, I already had a foundation in this discipline given to me by my father in the American tradition. Now there was a career military non-com walking up the, down the firing line here watching us. I had no idea who he was. I was just another plebe but he watched each target as it came back on the carrier. He happened to be Sergeant Walter Magnuson, the coach of the academy rifle team at the time. He came up on my point and waited until the target stopped and scrutinized it with an expressionless face. Then he looked me in the eye and said, you, private, report here at 1530 hours. Now, after I finally figured out exactly when 1530 hours was, I reported his order. And that, my friends, was probably the most pivotal moment of my life, even though I was clueless then. And here we are 56 years later. But now I want you to hear the story of the current rifle team coach at the academy, a man who has dedicated himself and helped shape many boys into young men here on the firing line and on the competition circuit. It's my honor to introduce you to Chief Warrant Officer, Paul Privilege. Chief Paul Privilege, and uh, he's the current coach of the rifle team. And uh, as uh, as I was telling uh, Paul earlier, when I was on the team for four years, in those four years I was on the team, uh, we actually went through three coaches. And uh, only one of those coaches is what I would say was a dedicated, a real rifle team coach, and that was uh, Sergeant Walter Magnuson. He was the one who recruited me. Uh, as you saw in the intro, that was this, the story about uh, Sergeant Walter Magnuson. But now, Paul's a different story because he has become a long-term dedicated rifle team coach. Now, how long have you been doing this? So this is my 19th year, and I uh, really didn't know what I was getting into when I, when I started. They just said, you're gonna be the coach of the rifle team, and I said, okay. You know, I shot rifles before, I, how hard can it be? But like you, I'd heard other coaches that had done a couple years stints here and there. And I also teach the history of St. Thomas Academy. Okay. And so looking back through the history books, there was a big void of uh, information from probably your era until the beginning of my era, which is 2003. So if you look back through the history of St. Thomas Academy, there's not a lot on rifle team from probably 
oh, the mid to late 60s uh, till 2003. And really, you know, and it's interesting you bring that up because I really feel that uh, what caused that was the anti-military sentiment of the Vietnam War era. And I could see that because I was here, you know, I finished in 69, here or there from 65 through 69. And of course, that was the height of that era. And uh, one of the things I'd always been looking forward to was uh, every, every senior class got to go up to uh, uh, Fort Ripley and shoot machine guns, throw grenades, and do all this crazy stuff. And that was discontinued in my senior year. And I'm telling you, I was pissed. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking forward to that all four years. But that was kind of indicative of, of an overall sentiment and placing the, the military. And of course, at about time, the name was changed from STMA, St. Thomas Military, right. military Academy, to St. Thomas Academy. It's, and like I mentioned before, that it's always going to be STMA for me. Right. But um, when I got here uh, in 2003 is when I first started, and we somehow won our way, won a state championship, JROTC, and advanced to the national championship, which was at the Olympic Training Center in Colorado Springs. Um, I thought we were doing really good. We had these old 853 uh, manual cocking BB guns, basically, was what they were. And um, I flew the boys out there, and the only thing that we ever did right was we rented a, a big, beautiful black Denali. Yes. So when we pulled in to the Olympic Training Center, I mean, they, there were all kinds of short school buses and school buses, you know, kids getting out and they're looking, they thought the FBI was there or something. And we get out and we just look like a ragtag outfit. We didn't have uniforms, we had sweatshirts on and all these guys had nice suits. They were pulling their guns in cases. We had little uh, vinyl cases that we kept our guns in. No scopes, no mats, no offhand stands, nothing. And so everything that you could do wrong in competition shooting, as far as you know, positioning the gun the same every time, the feet the same, everything. And that's part of what I teach now is, uh, it's a lot like bowling, you know, where you, where you throw the ball and it has to go over the same spot every single time. Shooting is the same way. You have to be, you know, it's one target at a time and you have to do everything exactly the same every single time, you know, to get the perfect shot. And so uh, I learned that very quickly and I developed my own shooting strategy and that is how I teach today. Back then I had no idea and it took about five years and it's still evolving. I still come up with new tips for the boys, new things for them to remember to try out. And, um, you know, as you probably know, most competitive shooters are the ones that have the most tools in their box. And that doesn't come just from one person. It might come from five different people telling them different things and it all works together to create one very special shooter. Yeah, that evolution of the air rifle is kind of cool too because of course when I was shooting here with all Rimfire 22 uh, Rimfire and uh, at some point, of course, inevitably, uh, all these teams went to air rifles and, and of course, uh, and that was not a bad thing because not, these air rifles nowadays are incredibly sophisticated and really have the same level of accuracy that these uh, uh, rimfire target rifles that we had. We had Winchester 52Ds, I remember them, you know, so well in, the, in this armory that you've got here just uh, next to the range. And now we've got uh, these incredible air rifles and, and you started out with a few and now you got like, what, over 30? Exactly. And uh, yeah, you're capable to support quite, quite, a, few, uh, quite a few team members. And, uh, and of course, uh, obviously less expensive to shoot. You don't have the, the air pollution issues or the noise or any of that. I remember uh, we, there was no, no ear protection when I was doing this. Right. And so we would kind of come up with our own, <laughs> our, own, our own makeshift ear protection. Because you can tell, actually, you can probably hear the acoustics oh, in this, in this range are very, are very, very hard. And uh, even a rim fire was very loud down here. And luckily I got to this point in my life and I, I can still hear. <laughs> the air gun, since probably the early 2000s, it really has progressed. It's cheaper um, and it, it's still just as competitive. It's, uh, we had Kimbers when I got here, Kimber 22s, and we shot all ninth graders got to come in here and compete or try out or get familiarization with gun handling and we were shooting Kimber 22 rifles. And 
those guns are heavy. Like, I mean, they're probably eight, nine pounds. You get these little kids, they could hardly lift them up. Sure, they were pretty much an exact copy of the Winchester 52. I have one, I have a Kimber. And actually it's kind of interesting because they, they had these D models, which were the really heavy ones. And uh, they happen to have a, a C, a 52C, which has a, a 750, like a more of a sporter contour barrel. And at that point in my life, I weighed all of about 105 pounds soaking wet. And I couldn't shoot one of those 14 pound rifles either. So I, I, I was issued that one, that, that lighter rifle, and did quite well with it because that fit my, uh, my physique. But one of the things I think I picked up out of this, and you know, I'd like to you know get your input on that too, is the uh, the whole uh, the whole system of this, and of course the 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 metaphor of your being able to discipline yourself in this in this venue, really carried on to not only my my schoolwork, but my life as a whole. You know, being able to have that attention to detail, and I bet you that's something that you really take pride in when you see these kids going down that path. Absolutely. It's, it's, uh, I start out with a lot of these kids as strangers. And when it's all said and done after four or five years, they are like just best friends or, you know, somebody, I meet their parents, I know them, but it's amazing to watch them transform. Like you said, it, shooting teaches you so much self-discipline, focus. Um, and a lot of these kids don't have any other sports. They're not into hockey or football or whatever. Um, and it's you against you. And it doesn't matter when you do that, when you take that out into the world and it's you against you, no matter what you're doing, you're focusing on improving and getting better yourself. And that applies to shooting, but it, it can apply to your schoolwork. It can apply to everything you do in life. Um, collectively, yes, you create a team of competitors, but shooting, as you know, it's a uh, you against you because everybody is shooting against everybody. There's only one champion. It's not a team champion. It's an individual champion. Uh, anybody who's just su successful at anything, whether it's competitive shooting or business or life, it's a process of constant evolution, you know, and making these minor adjustments in what you're doing. And, and eventually, of course, uh, it all comes out in the wash and your success. Well, I'm looking forward to that plaque being out in the hallway there with your name on it because you've earned it here. Well, I tell you what, I, I would have never happened without Bill Sullivan and yourself. It would have never happened. It doesn't, you know, I, I think I've won something like, well, I know with three national championships and we were the first competitive varsity sport in school history to have a national patch, letter patch sewn on our letter jacket. Outstanding. No other sport has done that. Um, but, you know, the successes, 72 state championships probably... 25 regional championships. It, um, it all came with time and, and just, you know, knowing, talking to people like you, talking, get support from Bill, other parents, stuff like that. It, it's made my time here as a coach really rewarding. And even, I re even though I retired last year as a teacher, um, I'm continuing on as a rifle team coach because uh, it's got a lot of good memories. And I, and I, and I like to work with these boys and and some girls now even are starting to get into the sport. I wouldn't mind having some girls on the team as well because uh, competitively, there's a, they are very competitive. You bet. As far as what, what I feel it has meant to the students, I've watched the students grow sometimes from introvert to, uh, to just an outstanding leader. And one of our missions here at the academy is to build men of character. As, as you know, and so uh, at one great example I could think of is, is a young man named Will Sullivan came onto the team in, in ninth grade and uh, just a quiet young man, you know, just like any other ordinary student didn't know him or anything and uh, ended up being team captain um, his senior year and actually was one of the most decorated um, as far as winning medals uh, shooters champions that the school has ever produced. Will Sullivan was in the class of uh, 2009, 40 years after I graduated here, and followed a similar trajectory, really came into the rifle team as a, as a freshman because he maybe wasn't too keen on a lot of the other athletic events around here, but thought he wanted to try this out. And in four years, he was captain of the team. And I've got Will's father here, Bill Sullivan, 
who is a classmate of mine here at the Academy. Bo both of us uh, graduated here uh, in 69. In fact, we were the first class to go all four years through this new building. And when we got here, it was not finished. And it was nothing but mud and salamanders. And we were tracking this stuff all through the school. And I remember bringing the reptiles and salamanders in. And it was, it was kind of a hoot. John, you're spot on. As always, great to see you. How can I help? Well, you know, you've been a tremendous booster of the rifle team over the years and gone on the road with them and been involved with, of course, uh, Will's, uh, Will's uh, track record with the team. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that and, of course, talk about not only the influence it had on him, but the experience that, that you uh, got out of it also. I find in life you get out of it what you put into it. So true. I had a wonderful experience. It was so much fun getting to spend some time, quality time, with my son, Will. We did uh, lots of time here in the range together, but some of our happiest memories were those on the road, traveling out to Camp Perry in Ohio, going down to Georgia to Fort Benning, uh, traveling out to Colorado, both to the United States Air Force Academy and to the U.S. Olympic Training Facility. Uh, I, I, I want to thank you and the opportunities that the rifle team provided for my family, which have in an um, inestimable way, helped mold Will into the man he is today. Me as well. Uh, I also, you know, want to talk to you. I want to bring that Paul back into this conversation yeah. too, and really discuss uh, that aspect of this school and how influential it is on all of us and on the, the students that are here today and how it's so important that we don't let these things dissipate and go go away because uh, there is that movement. I mean, as you know, we were here during the height of the Vietnam era, <clears throat> and now we have this same sentiment now, anti-police, anti-military, and I think it's so important that we maintain the benefits of this structure that, that is here as it is today yet. John, I'm reminded, you know, life is never a straight path. There are always curves and variations to the path. Uh, ours was a very painful period in our nation's history. We were on campus during the height of the Vietnam conflict. There was a lot of social unrest in the country, and it had some profound, it resulted in some profound changes for the country. We're seeing that same sort of social unrest today. It's sad, but nothing new. You and I have been through this before. I know that as angry as people are today, in a civilized society, we listen to each other's arguments, but we move on. We, we uh, recognize that things are gonna come back to baseline at some point. And I pray that that's the case. The lessons I learned here are life lessons. Uh, how to prepare, how to get up in the morning, how to take a shower and shave, how to put on, how to knot a necktie, and how to be sure, I just thought about it not 30 minutes ago, was my gig line straight? was my necktie, the buttons on my shirt, my belt buckle, and the zipper on my trousers all in one straight line. And I got that from St. Thomas Academy. That's right, you know, I, it's funny because I, I got all of that attention to detail, but it was, it was kind of a funny to me that there was, there was classmates that absolutely could not stand Chose that not aspect that. of right. it. <laughs> so <laughs> it didn't fit for some guys, but I think that, as you said, even, even those details like how to dress and, and how to present yourself were so important in the rest of our lives. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, Bill, appreciate you coming here for this. And now let's, uh, let's get back together with Paul here and we'll have a little bit of a round table. John, I'd like that very much. And again, thanks so much for inviting me. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Well, gents, here we are in the courtyard at the Academy. And I'm telling you what, we've got a few memories of this, don't we? We certainly do, John. Now, where were you in morning formation? Morning formation, I stood right here in front of this first of the four pillars. Freshman year, I was in A Company, like squad two or three. I was right in back of that pillar. Yeah, I'll never forget it. Every morning, we had morning formation. And uh, the Monsignor Roach, or then Father John Roach, uh -huh. would give a give a little morning talk. A little pep talk. A little pep talk. And uh, it was very important that you did not talk during his talk. Still a rule today. Still a rule no today. No talking in formation. <laughs> <laughs> you know, all that goes really to the culture of this place and the effect that it had on all of us. And uh, 
And to continue, I guess what I want to get across here, the nut of all this, is that we are intent on the continuation of this culture. And by the way, tell them about the four, you know, remember what the four pillars are? John, I believe I do. Uh, the essence at St. Thomas Academy deals with all boy, Catholic, college prep, and perhaps the most important tenet of all, it had a strong military base. The ROTC or the JROTC program was very much in evidence at St. Thomas Academy when John and I were here starting back in the fall of 1965. And you guys will be happy to know that those four pillars are still instilled and enforced to this day along with building men of character. That's, that's one of our mission, a part of our mission statement that we are creating or building men of character. And one thing around here that they do learn a lot about is responsibility, independence, accountability. Same, I'm sure it was the same way back when you guys were here. Today, I'm sorry to say that the American military and the law enforcement community, which by its very nature is composed of many of our veterans, have been disrespected and ridiculed by many. By many who are ignorant of the history and oblivious to the realities and threats of our world today. By many who actually despise the value system that built the greatest nation on earth, the United States of America. The Academy has been making young men out of boys since 1885. It instills the qualities of leadership, ethics, loyalty, commitment, and responsibility. It develops the spiritual, intellectual, moral, and physical potential in every student. I'm sure you'll agree that the great melting pot can use a bit more of these ingredients now. But that all depends on us. I want to ask you for a personal favor. Join with me to pitch in a few bucks to the Paul Privilege Scholarship Fund or the STA General Development Fund, whatever you can justify. It allows a young man whose family may not be able to pay full tuition to experience the gift of the academy. St. Thomas Academy only exists through the generosity of its alumni and friends. Become a friend and I can guarantee you that your investment will pay great dividends. One more parting thought, if you think the Academy might be a great place for your son, please contact them for the details. Take it from me, it was a life-changing experience on many levels.